Hello everyone, welcome to Sierra Innovation Week, um, the pre-event, under the name of Bridging Healthcare Berlin Goes to Sierra. Thank you for being here to our audience who are currently watching us live, but also those who might be watching the recording later. It is with great honor that Carables uh, takes that role of the international partner of Sierra Innovation Week. Uh, Sierra Innovation Week is going to happen in October 2021 uh, and it will feature 35 events focused on intellectual property, industrial and social innovation, geotagging and geopark and innovation in public policy. Um, they will be presenting the potential of Sierra's ICTs in research, innovation and developing development, connecting several innovative solutions already idealized or implemented in the state. Um, I would like to set the intention from our part uh, to this event and I feel for today before we go deeper into the concepts that we want to discuss and before we introduce uh, the other initiatives, um, I feel like this that today today's event would be about um, would be inviting people, inviting those who are watching us and others who might be watching us later to reflect on the current systems, to put questions uh, into how should we be taking care of ourselves for now, for the future, um, what does it mean, the different needs of different individuals around the world. Um, so I would say for today, I, will, I personally will try to get away from the notion, this binary notion of what is right and what is wrong and the idealization and the uh, devilizing of uh, systems and rather invite us all to think about uh, possible scenarios and think about uh, different ways of taking care of ourselves. O projeto Caribous começou com uma pergunta. Somos todos diferentes, então por que cuidar de todos de maneira igual? Você está se perguntando o que é o Caribous. Caribous são soluções para a saúde feitas sob medida, projetadas para atender melhor as necessidades dos pacientes. No Caribous, criamos soluções que respondem a problemas de pessoas reais. Desenhamos de maneira compartilhada as soluções para que as pessoas se tornem criadoras e não apenas usuárias de inovação. Profissionais de saúde, pacientes, designers e makers se reúnem para criar dispositivos de saúde. Nosso objetivo é capacitar, empoderar e ensinar outras pessoas para que todos possam saber construir tecnologias em favor do bem comum. Experimente, prototipe, compartilhe como você faz, documente abertamente a construção do seu projeto. Junte-se à nossa comunidade global em caribles.org. Um, Carable started with a question. If we are all different, why do we care for everyone in the same way? It started questioning the uniqueness of our needs and questioning that system that caters to these needs with, very, with standardized solutions that are often very expensive and does not meet the needs of the people, of the, of the users themselves. Um, if I want to break down Caribles, I'm going to think of two levels, two aspects that are interconnected. Caribles as a network and Caribles the documentation tool. The network um, is this network of the people we are working with around the world, but also the people that we're trying to reach and uh, people, initiatives, organizations 
uh, that can integrate concepts of open knowledge sharing, co-creation with the user's need at the center of the process of the design. Um, all those who are especially in these times um, that we're living during a global pandemic, all of those who are willing to reimagine um, our understanding of well-being on both an individual and on a collective level. So one of our aims is to establish long-lasting sustainable cooperation between spaces, initiatives that share the same values, um, and also for me personally, there is a lot of focus that I value in, there is a lot of focus that I give and a lot of value that I put into the connections that happens between the global selves, the spaces, south-south uh, south connections, how could we utilize technology, how could we utilize the internet so that we could foster the exchange of knowledge across the globe. And here comes the role of Caribous as a network. The other aspect is the documentation platform. And this is caribous.org and uh, welder.app. And this is where our partners across the world, people that we've worked with, but also people that we don't know or haven't worked with directly, document the making process of their healthcare solutions and devices. Um, so it is, it is a platform where people can upload the blueprints, their ideas, how, how to replicate the solutions that they have invented or have optimized so that others around the world can have access to that knowledge and replicate the same solution in their countries or in their places, um, um, in their environments, basically. And it's not only about replication, but also customization of the, of the device, of the design itself, so that it is customizable according, of course, to the individual needs of the users, but also according to the culture context and so many other aspects that might not be, um, uh, yeah, we cannot here talk about them all. After having briefly introduced Caribals, I would like to leave you right now with our first speaker for tonight, and that is Sebastian Yunman from Kados. Kados is a charitable and independent aid organization. It initiates innovative and sustainable projects focusing on need-based capacity building to help people help themselves. In this conversation or in this presentation, you will discover how could a group of people who have a lot of knowledge in building festivals can use that exact knowledge to help communities, local communities in places of crises. Yes, hello, I'm Sebastian. I'm one of the three co-chairs of CADUS. Um, CADUS is a charitable NGO based in Berlin and we're doing emergency response and humanitarian aid in crisis areas and war zones. CARDOS is a little bit uh, not so normal or standard NGO because we were founded out of the idea to give people with a lot of experiences in the technical field and medical field who have nothing to do since this very moment with humanitarian aid, giving an easy access to um, enter this field of world. And the idea came out of the thing that we organized, uh, like out of the subcultural community in Germany, music festivals and stuff like that. And there we realized that everything that was done there, like um, building up water systems to have proper showers, toilet systems, electricity, stuff like that. This is the thing that is needed in uh, crisis areas, and disaster areas. And so we wanted to bring all these wonderful people with these wonderful experiences and knowledge into this field of humanitarian aid. So, and out of this development process of Cardos and this founding process, um, we had a pretty dynamic and, and fast start, to be honest, because we immediately started to work in a war zone, in a civil war zone in northeast Syria, in the uh, Kurdish led area there. Um, um, in these uh, war zones or war areas we are working in, uh, there are not a lot of NGOs who are willing to go there. So, what we witnessed there, in compared to other crisis zones or disaster zones like after sudden onset disasters, is the lack of literally everything. So there were not there was a miss of products 
like medical products, medical um, equipment. There was a lack of uh, proper electricity systems. There was, I don't know, you, you can name it. Things were destroyed and organizations were not willing to go there to rebuild the things. So um, what is Cardo's about? The idea that came up out of these experiences was like, we want to be able to fill gaps, to go there where perhaps NGOs not really are willing to go or think not the need to go or don't have the media coverage to be interested to go. Um, then as well, we wanted to change this uh, white savior thing that is really pretty common in humanitarian aid. So we wanted to work on a one eye level with local communities. So one of the main things that we are always focused on is uh, knowledge exchange to like give as much as knowledge that we have to the local communities to, to like yeah, work proper together. And the third thing is uh, to bring back out of the field um, ideas for like products or solutions that are missing in these areas. Like for example, water filtration systems or uh, like we said, medical equipment. Uh, so we already built a kind of vital parameter monitoring uh, system. We built a mobile hospital based on four wheel driven trucks to be able to follow the dynamic situation in active war zones. And uh, so what is Cardus about? Today we have these uh, three big parts of Cardus, I would say. It is about like emergency response, um, high quality emergency response uh, at places where it's most needed, uh, fill gaps where it's most needed. Working on one eye level with the local communities to so make knowledge exchange as much as possible. And we also have this um, crisis response makerspace in Berlin. This is as well a, really a physical space, like a workshop where we build on these things. Uh, but also it is like an idea and a network where we try to bring together as much as um, uh, actors out of the field, out of the academia and stuff like that um, to work on. What will come out of the climate change that we obviously are not stopping at the moment? It is like um, a big increase in migration and migration pressure, definitely. So, but as well, we have much more sun onset disasters and as well, we have much more man-made disasters like fires, stuff like that. We have the lack of water, clean water in most areas and uh, regions. So, if we can say that we can take any, any, yeah, if, if we can say that we, that we have any preparedness out of the past, then it's perhaps like that we see the future of humanitarian aid, the future of emergency response will be much, much more dynamic, much more flexible. There will be much more disasters. They will be perhaps not so big. Like in the past, we had disasters like the earthquake in Nicaragua, uh, sorry, in, in Haiti with uh, 200,000 dead people and thousands and thousands of injured people. This was a big disaster where the big global community could help. Now we have a lot of small spots, like uh, for example, the migration pressure. We have a lot of the European border. is an is a ongoing humanitarian crisis with small spots where we have like for weeks or months a humanitarian crisis. So if we could say that we have any learning out of the past, then it's like we have to be, yeah, more flexible, more modular. We try to expand our portfolio. So that we're not only doing, only doing medical aid, um, but that we also say like, yes, it is about like technical solutions. So like I said, for water, electricity, and stuff and stuff and stuff. And uh, one more thing, how do we prepare? Perhaps, this sounds a little bit strange, we prepare ourselves in or with losing the trust in big structures. So for example, you saw it with the wildfires uh, in the past, that even states and governments are not taking them serious, so that the global community not uh, taking a look at the thing, or you saw it through the corona pandemic, that like all these climate change uh, followings were totally out of the focus. So it's much more about like rethinking all this humanitarian response system. If we can have one lesson learned um, out of the past about this thing, then it's like, it's all about intercultural sensitivity. 
we are, and our solutions are not the answer. We are not right. Nobody is really right. The answer is like in acting together, finding solutions, not like uh, yeah. concentrate on pushing through our idea how to help and why to help and where to help, but to develop this together with the local communities. You can't change anything without the people that you want to help. Uh, people can get in touch with us pretty easy. You can go on our homepage www.cardus.org. And uh, what ways on collaboration? Uh, I think for us, collaboration is really what is the biggest part of a, if we can speak about a kind of solution. So we are really believe in networking. We believe in uh, not like like defending a claim in humanitarian aid or something like that. It's about like, for us, it's well, what I said. The solution is uh, in really believing that we are never as clever as we think we are. <laughs> so that we always try to yeah, bring together as much as groups, institutions, actors as possible. It is with great joy that I introduce our next speaker, Elena Weber from MatchMyMaker slash BeAble. MatchMyMaker is a platform that takes it to a new level. They work on everything that we've been talking about hands-on, very, very practical. So they bring interdisciplinary teams together, connecting people with assistive needs to makers and designers with creative skills so that they can together develop solutions that eliminates physical barriers from open trailers to modular small houses that are barrier free. You can find everything um, on this platform. Hi, my name is Alina. I work for the association Be Able, a Berlin-based collective that fosters inclusion and integrates socially disadvantaged people through design. I would like to tell you more about our platform Match My Maker, which we invented in 2018. So what is the background of this platform? Many people experience physical barriers in their daily lives, needing assistive devices to lead a barrier-free daily life and living, which unfortunately are not available on the market. Like for example, Sven, here right above right, he is working as a foot designer photographer after he finished his education as a media designer. He has a spastic paralysis and therefore uses his feet much more in everyday life than his hands, for instance, to photograph or to write. But certain things like riding a bike are not possible for him. Our platform brings people with such assistive needs together with makers who have creative and technical skills and are looking for opportunities to use them in a meaningful, community-based way. We have a platform that matches both sides, needs and skills, and then accompanies them as a team to develop a tool for their challenge, documenting and uploading it. But how does such a journey look like? We want to show you that as a video, using Sven's case as an example. Sven hat einen ganz einfachen Traum. Damit hat er sich an Match My Maker gewandt. Die Plattform bringt Menschen mit Hilfsmittelbedarf und Maker zusammen, um gemeinsam außergewöhnliche Lösungen zu entwickeln. Okay Sven, was brauchen wir? Ein cooles Team. Genau. Über die Plattform können sich nun Maker für Svens Projekt anmelden. Okay, Team steht. Jetzt müssen sie nur noch entscheiden, wie sie zusammenarbeiten wollen. Auf einer Academy arbeiten Teams on und offline zusammen an Ideen, die die Welt ein bisschen besser machen. Wir werden uns zuerst damit beschäftigen, 
zu verstehen, was eigentlich das eigentliche Bedürfnis des Nutzers ist und was möglich ist technisch. Und diese beiden Dinge aufeinander bringen. Das ist ein besonderes Schwerprojekt, weil du musst ein paar Dinge gleichzeitig machen. Treten, lenken, bremsen. Was ist noch wichtig, Sven? Das wird auch cool sein. Richtig. Der erste Prototyp sieht sportlich aus, wird aber Svens Bedürfnissen nicht gerecht. Ich glaube, dafür wäre es total wichtig, dass du höher einsteigen kannst. Der Rahmen muss komplett neu geschweißt werden. Das geht nur in einer speziellen Metallwerkstatt. Über Match My Maker findet das Team Kados, ein Metallmakerspace im Zentrum von Berlin. Na, das sieht doch super aus. Sven kann alleine auf- und absteigen. Zurück auf die Academy. Jetzt steht der alles entscheidende Lenktest bevor. Ja, ich bin ehrlich gesagt total gerührt, irgendwie so herzerwärmend. Das Team ist so geil und es hat so viel Spaß gemacht, das Fahrrad zu bauen und jetzt an einem Punkt zu sein, wo er auch damit fahren kann. Herzlich willkommen bei der Open Health Academy Nummer 2. Und dann ist es soweit. Sven fährt Fahrrad. Auf Match My Maker findest du die Menschen für dein Projekt und die nötigen Tools und Support, um an einem Ort oder online gemeinsam Neues zu schaffen. Lasst uns zusammen die Welt inklusiver gestalten. Bring deine Herausforderungen, Projektideen und Skills ein und mach mit. Our main format to bring teams together and to guide them is the Open Health Academy, as you've seen in the video. In the past, these were events that lasted several weeks in one city in Germany. In the meantime, we have developed it further to bring more people together among regions and mobility. So by now, a academy is not a classical hackathon, but a virtual journey. It combines online and offline events includes virtual teamwork and brings together case providers that hand in challenges, makers with various competences and skills, and team mentors. But what structures are needed for such a program? In addition to the matching platform, we offer regular peer feedback sessions via Zoom to encourage exchange among the teams and give feedback. We also provide expert support and material refund. In the beginning, we introduced the teams to tools for virtual teamwork and communication, such as innovation journeys on virtual whiteboards with templates and video tutorials for every step. Just to give you a glimpse of what solutions the teams came up with. Most of the solutions you see here have been de developed in only four to eight weeks. You can find more solutions on the open source Carable platform, where they are very well documented in the way that everybody can download the instructions and codes in order to reconstruct the solutions for themselves or for relatives or for friends or colleagues who might be interested in using them. We are also very glad to see things get redesigned or improved by others. One of our main principles is don't act alone. So that doesn't only apply for our Hackademy teams, but also for us as a collective. We always join forces with partners and act in a network that includes Carables and other NGOs, as well as universities, foundations, social institutions and companies. We do as well cooperate with other players in the field of accessibility, with makerspaces, with fab labs, and with a lot of beautiful people who have amazing ideas. Some of them have their heads full of creative chaos and others have very well-structured constructive thoughts that we can work with. So we invite you to check out our website or even better, 
get in touch with us via the social networks or via mail. We are very curious and open for your thoughts, ideas, wishes and visions. On our website, you can see that you can always re register to take part in ongoing academies or in future events and projects. Right now, the Open Health Academy 5 is running and makers can still join some of the teams that are finding solutions for challenges such as how can we keep my muscles to stay flexible in order to keep me out of a wheelchair, a challenge that our case provider Thomas gave us. Or how can we define good digital tools or think of how to improve them for people with visual impairment, which our um, case provider Jörg came up with. If you have already some ideas spoken around behind your forehead, or if you want to get to know us or to know more about us, don't hesitate to get in touch or to get involved. Thank you for your attention. Best wishes from me and the Match My Maker team. Bye. How can you join Carable's community? On a holistic level, by integrating the principles and the concepts that Carable stands for, principles of co-creation, having the user's needs at the middle and the center of the design uh, process, also concepts of openness, openness of knowledge sharing. Um, this is on one level. Another level is to go on carables.org and really make use of the resources, the educational resources that we have there. Download toolkits on design thinking, 3D printing. Um, so you'll find our toolkits on the website. Another thing, a whole new level, is to enlist yourself on the Carables community map so that you are discoverable by other spaces around the world. So that if someone's in Brazil and they want to develop a device and they know that there is this makerspace or that technology there in this university that can be used, they can go or they can contact you as a space so that they um, can make use uh, of your resource, the resources that you offer Last thing, last but not least, is our Carable Decentral exhibition. So one of the things that I'm very proud that we've developed in the past years was Carable's Decentral exhibition. It is an exhibition that is fully downloadable online and could be 3D printed and uh, made out of nothing, basically. So take this opportunity to showcase the work of other countries, other partners that we've worked with. We've worked with people from Ghana, Brazil, uh, Nepal, uh, we have proudly exhibited that exhibition in more than 10 cities around the world. So be the next exhibition and introduce your communities, um, introduce your local community to what Carable is and what is possible because of these concepts and because of this platform. I think we are coming to an end, sadly, but surely is not the end of our connection. We hope uh, that you've enjoyed our event today and the talks and um, let's stay in touch. You can write us at hi at carables.org at any moment and we're happy over all forms of collaborations and cooperations.